Imagine an earthquake so powerful it causes the ocean to rise up and rush inland with towering waves. This is the terrifying reality of the Cascadia subduction zone. This fault line, which runs from Northern California to Vancouver Island, has the potential to unleash a devastating tsunami that could reach the coast within 15 to 30 minutes after the quake begins. Scientists now know that this area has produced some of the largest earthquakes in history, with the most recent in 1700 causing a tsunami that reached as far as Japan. Today, we're taking a closer look into expert advice on the only way to survive such a tsunami, immediate and decisive evacuation. Understanding the Cascadia Subduction Zone The Cascadia Subduction Zone is a ticking time bomb, stretching 620 miles from Northern California to Vancouver Island. It is where the Juan de Fuca Plate is being pushed beneath the North American Plate, creating enormous tension deep beneath the Earth's surface. Unlike other more active fault lines, Cascadia has remained deceptively quiet for centuries, with its last major earthquake occurring over 300 years ago in 1700. However, experts now believe that the region is due for another seismic event, potentially one that could rival the destruction seen in other subduction zones around the world, such as in Chile and Japan. The science behind this looming threat is chilling. The lock plates at the fault's interface have been building up stress for centuries, and when this energy is finally released, it will trigger a megathrust earthquake, possibly of magnitude 9.0 or higher. Such an earthquake will cause massive ground shaking across the Pacific Northwest and will set off a catastrophic tsunami that could engulf coastal areas in minutes. Geological evidence, including layers of sand and ghost forests in the region, tell the story of past events, revealing that Cascadia has a history of generating devastating tsunamis that sweep across the Pacific. These waves could be as high as 30 to 40 feet when they reach the coast, and for those living in low-lying areas, the window for escape will be perilously short. The reality of a tsunami from Cascadia? What happens? When the earthquake strikes along the Cascadia subduction zone, the effects will be immediate and overwhelming. One of the most alarming realities is that after the ground stops shaking, coastal communities will have as little as 15 to 30 minutes before the tsunami waves arrive. The size of the tsunami will depend on various factors, including the depth of the earthquake, the extent of land subsidence, and the local coastal topography. However, in many areas, the tsunami waves could be as high as 30 to 40 feet, obliterating everything in their path. The sheer power of these waves is unimaginable. As the ocean is displaced by the earthquake, it rushes toward land with tremendous speed, causing an initial wave that could be followed by several more, each potentially larger than the first. The water will not only flood low-lying areas, but also cause dangerous currents and debris fields that can drag people and objects out to sea. Buildings, roads, and infrastructure will be washed away, and entire communities may be cut off from the rest of the world for days, if not weeks. Adding to the complexity is the fact that there will likely be very little warning. While official tsunami alerts may be issued, relying on them could be dangerous. The only reliable natural warning is the earthquake itself. If the shaking lasts for several minutes, coastal residents must recognize that a tsunami is imminent. The message is clear. Evacuating to high ground immediately after the shaking stops is critical, as any delay could be fatal. The only way to survive, evacuate immediately. When it comes to surviving a tsunami triggered by the Cascadia subduction zone, there is only one effective strategy, immediate evacuation. After the earthquake strikes, the clock starts ticking. Coastal residents and visitors must act swiftly, with no time to hesitate. The tsunami could reach the shore within minutes, leaving those in low-lying areas with a very short window to escape. Experts agree that the key to survival is getting to high ground as quickly as possible, ideally a location at least 100 feet above sea level. Waiting for official warnings or guidance can be dangerous. While tsunami warning systems are in place, the proximity of the Cascadia fault line to the coast means that there simply isn't enough time for a comprehensive alert to reach everyone. The earthquake itself is the most important and immediate signal that a tsunami is on the way. 
If the ground shakes for an extended period, especially if it lasts for several minutes, it's a clear sign that evacuation should begin immediately. The challenge of reaching safety is compounded by the geography of the Pacific Northwest. Many coastal towns are situated on flat, low-lying terrain, making the journey to higher ground more difficult, particularly if roads are damaged by the earthquake. For this reason, experts advise pre-planning evacuation routes and identifying the nearest high ground before disaster strikes. The evacuation routes in many towns are marked, but residents must know them in advance. There will be no time to figure out where to go once the earthquake starts. In short, the only way to survive the Cascadia tsunami is to evacuate without delay, heading to the highest possible ground as quickly as you can. Secondary Hazards After the Earthquake While the tsunami will be the most immediate threat following a Cascadia subduction zone earthquake, other secondary hazards will add to the danger and complicate evacuation efforts. One of the most critical threats is ground liquefaction, which occurs when the intense shaking causes the soil to behave like a liquid. This can lead to the collapse of buildings, bridges, and roads, further limiting escape routes and emergency response capabilities. For those trying to evacuate, this can mean being trapped by crumbling infrastructure, with no clear way to reach safety. Landslides are another serious risk, particularly in the mountainous regions near the coast. The violent shaking can trigger landslides that bury roads and homes, making it even more challenging to reach higher ground in time. Additionally, fires are likely to break out as gas lines rupture, electrical systems fail, and buildings collapse. These fires can spread quickly, creating additional hazards for those attempting to flee. Furthermore, the earthquake may also cause dam failures and hazardous material spills, which could exacerbate the destruction in the region. These cascading disasters mean that even those who survived the initial earthquake and tsunami may face further dangers in the hours and days that follow. Emergency services will be stretched thin, and the widespread destruction could leave many communities isolated without immediate help. This reinforces the importance of not just surviving the earthquake, but evacuating swiftly and efficiently before these secondary hazards can take their toll. Preparing in advance and knowing the fastest routes to safety will be crucial to surviving the multi-layered disaster that a Cascadia event could unleash. Surviving the Aftermath What to do post-tsunami Once the initial tsunami waves have passed, survival is still far from guaranteed. The aftermath of a tsunami can be just as deadly as the event itself. Survivors must remain vigilant for secondary waves, sometimes called sister tsunamis, which can arrive hours after the first wave. These waves may be larger or more powerful, and the unpredictability of the ocean means it's essential to stay away from the coastline for an extended period after the initial tsunami. Heading back too soon, either out of curiosity or a desire to assess damage, can result in getting caught by these dangerous follow-up waves. In the days following the disaster, the coastal infrastructure will likely be in ruins. Roads will be flooded or impassable, and communication systems may be down, making it difficult to connect with loved ones or emergency services. Clean drinking water will be scarce due to contamination, and power outages could last for weeks. Those who have survived the immediate tsunami will need to find emergency shelters, which will likely be set up on higher ground, away from the devastated coastal areas. Authorities will provide basic supplies, but survivors should also have prepared emergency kits with food, water, and first aid supplies that can last for several days. The psychological toll of surviving a tsunami and its aftermath cannot be underestimated. Many survivors may experience shock, fear, and anxiety, not only from the event itself, but from being cut off from loved ones and the rest of society. Community resilience will be key during this time as survivors come together to support one another in the face of overwhelming destruction. The road to recovery will be long and it will require cooperation, patience, and preparedness to navigate the challenges ahead. For those who survive the tsunami, the immediate focus will be on staying safe, but the long-term task will be rebuilding their communities from the ground up. Sister Tsunamis, the Second Wave of Destruction Surviving the first wave of a tsunami may feel like a victory, but it's often not the end of the danger. 
After the initial tsunami strikes, a series of secondary waves, sometimes referred to as sister tsunamis, can follow. These waves may arrive minutes to hours after the first, and in some cases, they can be even more powerful and destructive. The unpredictability of these secondary waves means that anyone who assumes the danger has passed after the first wave is putting themselves at great risk. The reason these secondary waves can be so deadly is that the ocean doesn't behave like a single wave crashing against the shore. Tsunamis are more like a series of ripples spreading across the water's surface, and as the energy moves through the ocean, waves of varying sizes are generated. Some of the later waves can gain strength as they interact with coastal features or as they combine with other waves, making them more dangerous than the initial strike. For this reason, survivors must resist the urge to return to the shore after the first wave. The safest course of action is to remain on high ground for several hours, possibly even longer, depending on local conditions and warnings from authorities. Many casualties in past tsunami events have occurred because people returned to lower ground too soon, unaware that further waves were still on the way. Surviving a tsunami requires not only immediate evacuation, but also patience and an understanding of the unpredictable nature of the disaster. Only after all warnings have been lifted and it is confirmed that no more waves are coming should anyone consider returning to the affected areas. Now it's time to hear from you. How much does this scare you? Let us know in the comments section below.